Hello and welcome to LedgerCast. My name is Brian Krogsgaard here with Josh Olsewich. Hey, Josh. Hello, Mr. Brian. How are you on this fine October 1st? Uh, I've heard it's called October, so I'm doing great. Uh, also, what's up is token sets. Go to ledgerstats.com slash sets. It's asset management for a DeFi world. Build your crypto strategies and bring them to life on Ethereum and Polygon, maybe more soon, with their leading portfolio management tools. You can do everything from the uh, DeFi Pulse Index to uh, even some leveraged stuff that's pretty nifty. You can do a balanced mix like BED, the uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, kind of tri-crypto type of thing. You can do it all on token sets, ledgersats.com slash sets. See if you can find the strategy that works for you. Josh, you have the infamous, infamous CME futures contracts super chart. This is, uh, this is real content, me updating the CME chart. <laughs> is it a new month, new contracts, new moon? Um, October's over. September was whoa, trash. Whoa, whoa. You mean October oh, is here. September's over. October is here. I love the fall. Yeah. Some people hate it. The I love the short the days. Best. God, the fall I is hate, good. I'm, I'm Carpe Noctum. We went over this in the pre-show. So I love nighttime anything. Um, I love sweaters. I love hoodies. <laughs> you love pumpkin spice lattes. This is, let's go ahead and put it in there for the third week in a row. I don't, I don't love them, but they're interesting. Um, <laughs> but really Q4 is all about the seasonality the bullish seasonality of what happens in crypto so i mean look at just look at any q4 first of all it's weird that crypto operates in quarters like that we first noticed this with okex futures back in like what 2016 2015 i don't even know when futures started there we've uh, talked about this before but i don't know if it's like if it's tax related if it's just the futures at the time related um the futures expirations so they start in one month end in another month and there are weekly bi-weekly and quarterly usually right mm -hmm. at least there were and uh it just so happened to line up with price price action as far as the dates are concerned so i wonder what prices would look like without futures contracts you know um I don't know. Like, I definitely, would it be the it same? Yeah, I definitely think it has an impact. Uh, I don't know if it's like a massive impact, but definitely has an impact. Um, it's, it does seem to like people kind of set the tone for what they want to do in the quarter based on those futures contracts at times. I think it's, I think just as much of an impact is the more natural seasonality, non futures based seasonality that we've talked about over the years that has really shown itself um, pretty regularly, you know, just based on the calendar year, um, what people tend to do in the calendar year, holiday stuff, uh, you know, tax basis stuff, all that. So it's all, it's all a symphony, you know, but I like being able to look at this chart because you work so hard on it. <laughs> and it, well, so and sometimes it does seem to be, it creates some inflection points, so sell in may and walk away is the thing in legacy why is that i've never ever actually because investigated that rich wall street people go to the hamptons in the summer and then well, they, I get, they just come I back get, later i get that part of it but is that really it is that like yeah there's just less volume less activity people are on vacation they're not at the desk and the market just kind of floats does nothing exciting and then sets the tone when they come back because school starts so I think that's really the, the mix of it. The sell and may go away. I think it's, I mean, it's summer vacation type stuff. <laughs> like this, like I, I, things don't have to be that complicated, do they? No, I don't think so. Um, so I guess things to watch for. We already saw the rollover. So sorry, I'm trying to like put the dates in here and talk at the same time. No, that's fine. Um, Think the, why this chart's even important, other than just the dates, is, the, is when the rollovers happen. We saw some crazy volatility uh, last week, the week before. In general, we see more volatility around these dates. Uh, I'm not a yeah. quant, so I can't like quantify that exactly. But 
it just feels like there's always crazy volatility. Feels like we have tailwinds on the way as well. Uh, so there's a, you know, I, I mentioned last week, all the down since, you know, we kind of had this grind push up and then people very heavily sold into what was the underside of this prior distribution. But all the down occurred in three dailies, right? And the last two days is like, it's just tell, telling the market, no, thank you. That's not, not going to work. So it's kind of incredible to me that in Bitcoin, like most days have been very, very boring. And then all of a sudden you have a whole lot happening in one day, you know? And I think what's going to be telling is, do we have, like, do we continue that? You know, we become boring for like 10 days straight. And does that open up trades elsewhere? Um, additionally, like from a levels, moving average, trend following stuff, it's just, it would be chopping you to bits, right? Because it tells you, um, you know, that, that there was trend reversal and then it just, boom, it just nukes that. And it did it in both directions. Um, all leaning towards chop, all leaning towards not very much information. And uh, this Coinbase top line that I have from 57K, I actually think we can, from lower than that, we can get confirmation that we're going to go higher. But I think that's definitely the, like, above that, you're not taking all-time highs away from this market, in my mind, on Bitcoin. And so that's the, the real clearance that I would be excited to see. Um, I still find Bitcoin as a whole very patternless, very difficult to trade if you're trying to do pattern trading based on it. Um, it spent almost as many days as you could possibly imagine down in this kind of last stand type of zone. I, you know, it just looked like it wanted to give up 40K, but then the, now the response off of it is 20%. And it's like, okay, well, I guess 40K will hold, you know? <laughs> so it's just very difficult to trade. I just haven't done it. I just have not traded this. It's been a challenge. Um, I guess if you were trying to continue to trade it, you would buy these dips down to 45 or 46. Um, looking at this as a, a flip of a level that's been used multiple times um and and seeking essentially price expiration or if you're really going to paper hand it maybe like mid 50s um ethereum's cleaner to me personally but before i get to that do you want to give any additional analysis on bitcoin here i don't know why but your audio for me on zoom it's just like zoom. a robot everybody else is good you can ignore it it's just hard to listen. I can't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just act like you didn't listen to me. It'd be fine. Just repeat it. If I could send you this audio, it would be hilarious because you sound like you're talking through a voice synthesizer. Yeah, that's okay. I'm actually going to be testing some software that a guy built that uh, is going to be considerably different and hopefully better. So short Zoom. <laughs> Seriously, short Zoom. Um, I got to pull up your audio on Twitter or something. I don't know what to do. Is it? delayed on twitter at all i think that everybody and i don't know one's telling me my audio is bad so just you talk well it's gonna be weird yeah i can't even listen to it on um the streams because it's delayed a little bit <laughs> i gotta i don't know what to do honestly <laughs> it's really bad um yeah bitcoin it needed to stay above the 200 it needed to stay above uh 40 40 to 42 we talked about that on some show some week i know um and even kind of w'd a little bit on the daily well yeah it's been a definitely a hot mess that's why you just have to have some sort of conviction about some direction if you want to buy and hold with size or trade on leverage whatever you want to do and just stick with it because <laughs> this thing it's gone from down 20 over 20 percent to up over 15 percent uh, it's been very weird for uh end of september even for september it's been weird but it is above the cloud now and you're getting this uh tk cross recross soonish so i mean this That's is exactly historically what, a big deal this is exactly what i want to see if i'm a cloud person you know like it doesn't look great right now it doesn't need to look great i'm just looking at what this cloud stuff looks like yeah Josh, if you still can't hear me, um, you're welcome to just join, like leave and rejoin the call. Yeah, let me let me try leaving the call. 
All right. See you in a second. I'm going to talk about Ethereum while you're gone. Okay. Um, so in my mind, I mean, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, I don't know which one's going to go faster. And what I'm interested in is the fact that uh, they might run together. Like, I wonder if Ethereum is essentially inter entering the land of majors. Um, so like historically, we talk about Bitcoin dominance and, you know, Ethereum gets crushed when Bitcoin runs. But what we see in terms of um, ETH BTC, they seem to really be moving mostly together and even more so the pattern on ETH just feels a lot cleaner. The, the way things are working against levels and all that just seems significantly better to me. Um, so in my mind, Ethereum is still a great trade, but I, I wonder even if we get a big bid on Bitcoin, unless like the futures ETF thing gets approved, if they'll just move together, like if they'll look pretty similar to one another. And in that case, I personally would rather hold Ethereum because I can do more with Ethereum. Josh, are you back? Can you sound, how, can you hear me? I'm back. Your audio is still completely messed up for me. Okay. I'll send you a Google Meet link, okay? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, all right. I'll send it to you in Telegram. Saying goodbye to Josh. Um, Freaking Zoom. Short. I seriously hate Zoom. Uh, but, um, yeah, Ethereum... Ethereum looks really freaking good to me right off of the 200-day uh, moving average. And I think that we could be setting up um, a potential repeat of the 2017 fractal. And I know Josh doesn't really uh, agree with me necessarily on that. Ding dong. Um, I know Josh doesn't necessarily think it looks the same as 2017, but I think it looks the same as 2017. So, um, <laughs> I like how you see that when I'm not here. Yeah. Um, well, we talked about it before the show. I know I'm joking. Your audio is still messed up by the way. <laughs> this is, I, this is not me then it's you. How is it not? Check your speakers or something. Um, I mean, it was fine earlier. I don't know what changed. Well, this is saying my audio is causing echo. Hmm. Well, this is great content. Do you have the Twitch feed and Zoom playing? Yeah, I know it sounds... Uh, Josh, what's frustrating about this is the chat. It sounds great to the chat, and I know it sounds great to the chat. So it's yeah, only, yeah, I checked, it's I checked only, Twitch. It's only you. It's only the way you hear. Um... So I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't know what to do, you know? Yeah. Can you hear me at all? Or is it just. People are saying like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm doing everything right. Trust me. It's the software. It's not me. Josh. If yeah. You... I can hear you. It's just super. Okay. We'll just try to power through buddy. Okay. <laughs> If you uh, don't mind uh, sharing your screen again. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Ethereum looks better for sure. Ding. It looks better in a sense that it's cleaner, like you're saying, when there's a cup and handle there. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I really... I really like the Ethereum chart a lot. Like in a vacuum, I would rather be, I would rather be trading um, th this Ethereum chart. So therefore, that's what I'm doing. You know, like maybe that's too, uh, and it's too basic of a thinking pattern, but it's just how I feel. You know, no, I mean you got to trade what you're comfortable trading. I don't see any problem with that. It's just you got to watch the ETH BTC chart. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I'll keep an eye on it. Like if dominance or if like ETH BTC really starts to look weak, then I might change my tune, you know, but until it actually shows that it's doing anything, I don't see why I need to change my tune. You know, like I can just 
stick with what's what I've got going on right now. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, because this thing, I think we talked about this last week too, but this thing could cup and handle to point one easy. Yeah, the I, a lot of people don't like the ETH BTC chart, and I think it looks amazing. <laughs> you know, like it's like your child that everybody thinks is ugly, but you think it's beautiful because <laughs> it's your child. Wow. <laughs> It's not. It's, it's just consolidation. It's not. It's ugly. It's about as ugly as the BTC USD chart is. But, you know, to each his own, I guess. When I look at it on a weekly uh, basis, it just looks like this incredible. How many weeks is this? Um, 21 bars. So on a weekly chart. Yeah, it's a it's a 20 one week consolidation with like equal highs and higher lows that is i'll take that all day long as a trade all day long i mean it actually looks better on the high time frames yeah it had and it always has this is what i've been saying like i've been saying ever since it looked like it could have like done you know whatever double top whatever It, it it came down and it was like I will stand and I will support this 0.055, which by the way was a friggin', you know, if you're going to put um, some additional levels on it, this was our magnet beginning of the year. Magnet was what we thought it was going to go to top side. Well, it blasted through it and then it used it as support twice and then made higher lows after that. So it looks friggin' great. It looks so good on the weekly. So will I hold Ethereum? Yes. It reminds me a little bit of the silver chart because if this breaks down, then you're in trouble. Well, yeah, but it hasn't broken down. You know? I no, I'm just look. I'm driving, right? I'm driving. I check my mirrors. I check the lanes. I check to make sure there's not a crash in front of me. You know, that's what this is about. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, it's also following the like relative to USD, the 20 week trend. Uh, flip that I love to see uh, back in 2017 you said it doesn't look alike but you know it's it's uh, using the 20 week of support just like it did back then if it makes new highs I'm in anticipating massive blast off and 6k ETH at a bare minimum and like I I legit I you know I this is the time of year where I'm trying to figure out am I going to hold stuff until the end of the year do I think there's like a 2x left that I can not realize this year so if you roll over everything tax perspective wise you're going to owe a crap load of money if you made money that year but if you can make this kind of defined trade towards the end of the year and hold it to january you delay those taxes a long time so i'm that's what i'm essentially setting up is to see can i just like iron hand ethereum of which i know two months or, October, November, December, three months is not like super iron handed, but that's my goal, right? I want to hold Ethereum until the end of the year, delay those taxes on that two to maybe even three X. If it goes to 10 K, for example, um, that would be amazing because that makes up all of those uh, tax issues that you would have because your unrealized gains would be able to pay for it. Until they start taxing unrealized gains. Yeah, that's a, that's bull, bull crap. <laughs> Um, Tezos also, we talked about this in the pre-show. We talked about it a lot last show, but, um, uh, looks fine still, you know, looks volatile and messy, but yeah, good. Tezos, uh, I mean, it hadn't hit price expiration yet, but it still looks strong. Um, the only problem with that is now that ETH and Bitcoin also both look strong. I don't know what that means on the relative pairs. I haven't even looked at them. I feel like if I look at them, I'll fud myself out of this bag. Okay, just close your eyes for a sec while I look at them. <laughs> I've got a. I just I just pulled it up. It still um, looks fine. It still looks like, 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 yeah, it still looks like it broke the trend. Like they're keeping up. It's keeping up for now. Uh, Tezos BTC. I don't know. Faded it a little bit today. It's a little little dicey. That's what I'll have to keep a close eye on. I'll probably. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably fud myself out of this bag looking at the, that chart and then talking about iron handing ETH for tax reasons. Although it looks like it could go down, um, a little bit on a relative basis and it'd be like a great entry. 
So if it goes down 10, 12% on a relative basis and bounce, it, uh, it still flipped the, you know, the longer term trends. And that's why we, the t title of the show last week was you're going to make me buy Tezos is because it just looks so good on these relative on these relative pairs in addition to that price expiration for USD. So I probably just need to follow the plan and do nothing. The question is, will I do that? Yeah, it looks, I don't know, like, like everything looks like it could go either way really at this point. Wow. Analysis. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, I said, what, 10, uh, 10, 15, like we'll know if you look at the DeFi perp, um, I said we'll know by 10, 15, cause that's where the cloud level is. Do you think the majors dominance thing is real or like, do you think DeFi will keep up? I, I don't know what to think about dominance. Like chart wise. I don't know if layer ones will keep up. I doubt it because they only moved because BTC and ETH weren't doing anything, you know? People were going to playgrounds on AVAX and stuff because they couldn't make any money on BTC. Yeah, I think generally across assets, if you can get the same degree of po like positive volatility in an asset with greater liquidity, anybody with money wants that. So that's that's one of the reasons people will want prefer majors if it, they're moving is because they can get liquidity. So therefore the flows will go back towards those if they look like they're moving and you don't have to be in stuff that's lower liquidity with the same type of moves or whatever. So I, I think trying to figure out like how that, how the liquidity flows is going to be a very important component of finding where people will go. And on that same note, maybe that supports my like, what if ETH and BTC both move is because of the liquidity on both of them is fantastic, right? Like it may even be, I don't, I have to look at this, but like how's, what's the volume profile even like between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Are they the same? As far as what? Total, total volume and liquidity. I'm going to look that up because I think sometimes, I think there I are think about I think there are times where Ethereum's like volume and stuff is just about as high as Bitcoin's. Um, yeah, so 24 million today versus 40 million, both very good. I, need, I don't know what this is like on a, uh, like a seven day. I don't know what I just did. I sorted by price. Um, I don't know what this looks like on like a seven day basis or 20, you know, like a, whatever. But that's really good volume on both of them. And you look at relative to kind of the next things in line, it's multiples ahead. So I, that's that does. I think that does help support my argument. Like even Solana, you know, 3 million relative to 23 million for Ethereum. Huge difference. The thing about volume is you can't trust any numbers from anybody. Like anywhere. So. Yeah, I mean, you can some of it what about on chain volume you can trust on chain volume yes but that's going to be very eth heavy we um, have a blockchain we could do that we have the technology yeah uh, but the exchanges you know even coinbase was caught with wash trading so yeah i don't know i think that's that's too uh too skeptical well i want to trust something but what are you gonna do? Like, if I see Bitcoin Cash at seven point five million, there's no way that's legit. No. Right. So, so Mave, Mave in the chat said, "I spent all morning farming on Soul. ETH and BTC are just shiny rocks in my portfolio." <laughs> I like that. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I like the yield farming stuff, and I mean, you can do you can do some pretty juicy yield farming with Ethereum. It doesn't have to be on layer one, but that's like what I was doing on Avalanche and stuff. It's nice if you can earn 40, 50, 60 percent APY on top of holding majors. So yeah, like farming is fun. Um, you can also do it with wrapped Bitcoin. You don't have to just be on Solana for great yield. Um, well, that was, that's my favorite part about layer one season. All the ETH maxis had their Jimmy's Russell because people were going elsewhere, you know? Yeah. It's They're still, locusts. It's, Everybody's a locust. They're a leveraged locust trying to get the best grasses to feast on. <laughs> I, I identify as this. Um, I will, ch I will chase the yield. I don't feel bad. I'll stack it back to Ethereum and I'll be happy. That's fine. Yeah. AVAX, uh, the Avalanche ecosystem has been awesome for that. Also, I think the value accrual ends up going back to Ethereum anyway. If if the 
place where all that is occurring is EVM compatible, which is what Avalanche is. Um, it's what BSC was even. It's what Polygon is. They're just they're just uh, playgrounds for using the EVM. That's extremely bullish for Ethereum. Yeah, I mean this this Avalanche TVL is insane. I mean TVL's a silly metric to me as well because it's all just incentive based. Well, it's going to two x that because like Ave is not even turned on yet. I just saw a tweet from somebody on the Avalabs team that was like, just tweaking a couple of things and then it'll be live and then you're going to get this like huge inflow of. Uh, Ave money that also goes over there for the TVL. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate directly to the coins, like the individual coins there. But definitely not. Yeah. But it could translate to Ave price or Ave, Avax price or something like that. Um, if especially if TVL gets like out of whack enough relative to total market cap that. It just seems obvious that it needs to go up. You just need excuses for things to go up, right? You don't need like total justification. You just need some excuses. Um, so, just yeah, I'm, bu I'm bullish on Avalanche TVL. I how that translates <laughs> to Avax, Joe, whatever. I don't know. I got a lot of Ethereum right now because I was very, very, very bullish Ethereum. So that was more certain play with uh, lower downside to me. So I did transition a lot of stuff back to Ethereum and I don't apologize for it because Ethereum immediately went up. <laughs> so, you know, we will see. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't, I don't think TVL is bullish for anything other than APYs, honestly, like. It is bullish for APYs. Uh, well, it's actually not, it can reduce APY price has to follow. It's bullish for a signal of platform activity. You know, I actually wrote a newsletter about this. How about that? Yeah, I guess I'll reword it and say it's bullish for new projects on Avalanche with new APYs. Yeah. So for Flipmetrics, I wrote a article, the, D <laughs> the DL on TVL. I read the article. Yeah. TL's um, a joke, dude. What? TVL's a joke. Or TVL's a joke. Um, who was it? Johnny it's, talking about TVL? He had some good expression about it. Well, it's not so like locked is in quotes, right? Yeah. It is a deceptive term. So, you know, you can have soft lock stuff. You can have time locked stuff. You can have completely unlocked where it's like just a transaction away from not being locked. <laughs> um, or you can have like, I called it black hole locked, which is what like convex is. Cause when they wrap curve, they send it to four year locked V curve and it's like super crazy. Um, so yeah, it matters a little bit, uh, is not perfect, but what I said in that article is TVL is a nice thing to know. Just like total protocol revenue is nice to know and several other metrics, it's not an end-all be-all and it does not indicate the true value of a protocol all by itself. It's a piece of a puzzle for valuing DeFi projects. Yeah, that's fair. As long as people, I feel like too many people look at TVL and are like, oh, we're so bullish on this because TVL is going to infinity. Well, sometimes that's, that's fine. But it, like we said, it doesn't translate to token value. Not necessarily. It's like, and it's not like being fully. bullish on Omni it's because it. Tether is it's, like mooning and circulating. I think, it's a, you know? I think yes, if Omni was, if Tether was on Omni today and Omni was like, yeah, we DeFi, uh, people would definitely be making the argument for Omni much stronger than they did back in the day when Tether was actually on Omni, which is hilarious to think about in hindsight, right? That Tether was on Omni. like only like there was not erc20 tether that's crazy it was like all the participation of cryptocurrencies was so centralized that only the centralized exchanges had to support omni and transitioning to tether around the world for tether to get massive usage now if, if you imagine tether on omni it would be like no of course we're not going to use that it must be on EVM compatible chains. It must be on Ethereum and whatever else. Funny to think about it. I had not considered that, but I like it. I like thinking about it right now. Yeah, it's interesting how it all worked out and how Omni is still nothing. Did you see this week Tether, uh, the 
the New York AG dropped the lawsuit, I think. I didn't see that they dropped the lawsuit. I did see a Wall Street Journal article today where, um, oh gosh, was it the Fed? Somebody is pushing for stablecoin entities to essentially be viewed as banks. Stablecoin what? Viewed as banks? Institutions? Yes, this is in the Wall Street Journal. And it says the Biden administration, not the Fed. The Biden administration seeks to regulate stablecoin issuers as banks. Um, Interesting. And so overall, I, guess, I think that's potentially very bullish, actually, because that's not banning stablecoins, right? That's treating the entities that issue them as banks, and then stablecoins become true dollars. Like, that could be really good. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for it. I don't think stablecoins are decentralized anyway. So, Duan Wong on, said in the chat, CBDCs on the way. And I probably I agree with that. The fact we're just so in the conversation now. I was also talking about this yesterday. Is there was a guy that, in Congress asking if he thought that uh, there's a case to make cryptocurrencies illegal and asking the Fed chair specifically that. And just it's awesome. Like it's so good. Um, we need to. It need, crypto needs to be in that conversation. If you would have said this is the battle four years ago, we were like, okay, nice pipe dream, buddy. <laughs> you know, like and here we are. Yeah, so I guess it wasn't the New, New York AG. It was just uh, class class action lawsuits, but oh. it's a step in the right direction, I guess. Half of them. So half the people that piled into a class action were probably doing it for silly reasons. Um, and speaking of uh, law, what's going on with comp? Well, so we had Robert Leshner on up only. Um, and he described what the bug was, but it was essentially the token rewards of comp were accidentally able to be redeemed by a, a smaller number of wallets when they went to claim their comp rewards. So if you should have gotten, say, like one comp as a reward, it might have given you a thousand. <laughs> you know, but, um, and so what it did is it basically it, it wasn't like protocol funds at risk or like user funds rather, it was protocol funds at risk. So this bucket of comp that was set aside essentially uh, took a couple years worth of them and went ahead and spit them out in one go. Funny to me, like it seems like it might somehow find a way to be bullish <laughs> because you just made more certain um, the, the uh, emissions, right? Like it, you just pulled the Band-Aid, right? Rather than a drip. So, yeah, the up only curse is undefeated. It's unbelievable. People get hacked, their coin tops, <laughs> all time high net worth. It always happens right around the episode. It's unbelievable. I mean, what it boiled down to is an inflation bug, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was a greater than or equal to was necessary, and it only had a greater than. And it took a really long time with a lot of smart people looking at it to figure that out. Um, and they had lots of review and all this stuff, so learned a lot of lessons, but in the end, comp, the platform is still very secure. Um, but that, that emissions bug did go out and anyway, it was a good, good episode worth, worth listening to his response to that for the first hour or so, second hour, if you want other stuff. So, I mean, it's still a trust issue. Nothing's faster than trust. You can lose that in the blink of an eye. And that certainly doesn't help their case. It doesn't, for, but I think if you listen to what he says, if you look at what they're doing, like I would still trust comp. I I, I get all of that. I'm not saying you like he's wrong or whatever, but you know, you make one mistake with this stuff, and that's kind of yeah. Like I think the people. difference is if you consider all DeFi protocols, like you have to spread out, right? If you if you have all your money, um dependent on a singular DeFi protocol, that could be very scary. So if you're going to participate in that type of stuff, I don't think you can do it isolated among in one, you know, you gotta, you gotta spread out. I think also it highlights the importance of insurance in this ecosystem in the future, which will obviously dampen yield, but is going to be important for security and uh, knowledge that, you know, there's a backstop. So, That'll be. I think that'll be an interesting product in the future. I mean, does insurance even work for DeFi? 
um, yeah, I think it'll be inherently built into many of these products. I forget what it was. Was it Nexus that had the insurance thing? Yeah, and I'm not saying it's any of those solutions. I'm just saying there's these. There will be new things created to make all of this a little less scary over time, and I'm excited about it. I'm not gonna give up on DeFi because of some bugs. No, I, I that's what I'm not what I'm saying at all. It's just individually these projects like you have an error, you have an issue that yeah, affects and, and it's, the underlying it's token. Good, it's like, good good game. <laughs> That's going to turn some people away. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, what other like sectors are you looking at, Josh? I mean, I'm mostly, honestly, I'm mostly watching uh, ETH and BTC and a little bit to see if we get tailwinds and other stuff, but I need, we, uh, I need stuff to start showing relative strength for me to get terribly excited. I do think like Ave is a good proxy, right? So, you know, I used to have this right here. Josh just disappeared again. Sorry, I don't know you're why back. I okay. did that. Okay, you're back. I used to have this right here on Ave, where I was like, flip that, maybe we get some strength. Well, the strength, it did do it, and then the strength was pretty weak, right? Another 15% relative move, and then bled it all the way out. So now I'm just moving it over. <laughs> flip that, give me some relative strength. But what's uh, getting interesting, if I'm using Ave as proxy, is will it will the gin spartan be proven right and it just kind of keeps doing that bleed all the way to all-time lows or will we get like a sustained move in something like ave one of these DeFi things and you get like a really nice move i think all of the lending and borrowing stuff needs regulatory clarity from the u.s before it can do anything yeah so that makes, silly it hard, as that, may be. that makes it hard to be long that relative to Ethereum, doesn't it? Because Ethereum itself has much better regulatory clarity. Yeah. And there's nothing more bearish than low volume bleed like that. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a Zcash chart to me. <laughs> it really does. Uh, ouch. Um, All the, even Maker. Maker's getting pummeled over the past uh, couple of weeks. There's a relative, there's a pair trade there, really, because magic internet money. Uh, backed by uh, it's abracadabra money whatever uh so mem is the stable coin and there's a lot of a lot of people talking about the advantages of mem over die and spell is the backing coin of that uh versus maker and i have a bag not gonna lie but it looks good it, it, like the pair trade can be you can consider it and there's some people that would say like that's stupid you're an idiot i don't know why my candles are red when they're going up this is on you for cursing my candles versus line chart <laughs> uh so yeah the spell chart looks pretty insane it does it definitely does but it's another one of these like flavor of the week flavor of the month coins you know it's, so it's hard to like gauge. Is it bullish because it actually has a fundamental underlying protocol development? Yeah, it's or like a. It just, it's it, the argument is that it's a better stablecoin design. I, I hear you, I see you. I just don't know if that's what's going on there. You know. Well, additionally, there's a narrative that okay, if all the back stablecoins are securities, if those issuers become banks, then an algorithmic stablecoin that is decentralized. I guess maybe in air quotes. Uh, <laughs> um, there, that's where like native crypto moves to is kind of the argument there. So I think that is a narrative worth considering and potentially playing as a trade. Therefore, I am. I have a like I said, I have a bag. I have a bag. Talking about bag. I think it's a good argument. I think I think we will see one or more partially backed, fully decentralized, whatever stable coins probably uh die and mem as the leaders for now but maybe more uh make a real push for well die is like 56 percent usdc right yes and that's partly why people don't like it and it's like it's silly that people ignore that i'm trying to pull up the exact number i can't remember the website but that's i got it hold on hold on UST is another one, Terra Luna's thing. I don't know as much about it. I keep getting trolled about that because they're like, 
you are sleeping on t- U.S. Uh, Terra and you're an idiot and whatever. And Terra is going to go to price exploration while Tezos doesn't. You're so stupid. Have fun staying poor. I think Terra is an east-west thing. I think Terra is it's seemingly a, popular in uh, Asia, Korea, South yeah. Korea, but yeah. and I don't chart, hear anything about it. The chart yeah. does look good. I just have a hard time buying it. Relative market cap. 100 IQ stuff. See, so yeah, maker is uh, or die. Total is six point five billion. USDC component is three billion, at least, if not more. Yeah, Dust says in the chat, MIM developers are integrating on layer twos and alternate layer ones. That's an insert by me. Faster than any other debt-backed stablecoin. They're like the SNX team of twenty twenty DeFi summer. I agree. They are like they they just ship constantly, constantly. I know the one of the guys behind it a little bit, and it's just he's constantly shipping. It's crazy. So yeah, I think it's very cool. Uh, will well, it, that's like, what I'm wondering. With, I don't know. With uh, asset protocols like uh, token sets and Enzyme, like I want those to go layer two real bad they because are, they are they are the I, fees I, are still atrocious. I did a intro between token sets and undisclosed <laughs> protocol. Um, like last week because it's very important for them and they're on polygon but they they got they can't just be one they got to be all you have to yeah. what you need is you need assurance on one chain but access on many chains hmm and just imagine what protocol might be able to do that um so there's uh yeah the whole where will this activity take place debate is so interesting it's like the most interesting problem that we have in crypto and then where will the value accrual occur um so i i think most of it ends up being value accrual back to eth as long as evm maintains dominance but we'll see you're looking at solana is that a gap on a solana candle <laughs> like did it yeah, go, my, did it go up so fast that it just gapped I think Trinity's just messed up, but yeah, it looks like a gap to me on the daily. Um, um, yeah, I I talked about this on Wednesday in one of my videos, and I was saying like it's a key gene bounce. I should love this. I should want to buy this, but and then you I, I just it. didn't have the courage. You hundred IQ'd it. Did not have the courage, and it Adam and Eve on me too. Yeah, every time I like declare a Solana temporary top, I'm pretty good about it. But then it doesn't retrace near as much as like a normal rational person would anticipate. Like I thought sub 100 Solana was a super magnet, like somewhere in here, right? Like just sweep those people and the buyers that desire Solana, they're there, they're out there and they sw- they sweep it up when it comes like, look at that stinker on <laughs> linear you know it's just like no i will curl up right here you will not go below a hundred dollars you will pass go you will collect two hundred dollars <laughs> looks like you talked about the highest, volume and liquidity not. earlier i mean that's what this that's what doge was about that's what um what's something else that popped off like gme and amc all that stuff is just crazy volumes so these big players can get in and make crazy trades right yep so Solana was definitely part of that. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, okay, overall, before we go, bullish, bearish, or neutral one month from today. Halloween. What are we talking about on Halloween? Are we talking about all-time high price exploration? Yeah or nay? So I think let me start with today because seeing us up into Q4, it's early, but it's a great sign. You know, we were we were teetering there on the USC chart and the ETH chart, for sure. Um, we're definitely on the bullish side of neutral now, even if I pull up a pitchfork, your favorite. Um, we're on the bullish side of neutral now, whereas last last week we were on the bearish side of neutral. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm getting more and more optimistic by the day. We'll say it like that. I don't know if we're going to talk be talking about price exploration by Halloween. I need to see two more weeks. Give me two more weeks, then I can 
be more confident about all time high exploration, but um, it looks really good, right? You can't deny the the strength after just crazy doom on September seasonality. Yeah. Um, I think when you talk about whether we're in price exploration, why by that point in time, the hardest part about it is it's such a narrow frame. Like when you put it on a daily chart, like that's not a long horizontal distance to get to all time highs, right? 4,200, 30 days, it's right here. So you have to, you have to pump pretty fast and you might jiggle around in there. So, you know, like it's a little, a little tough to guarantee, but here's what I'll say. I think Ethereum will have breached its daily closing all time high by Halloween. And I don't think Bitcoin will have. I mean, ETH looks better positioned for all time high retest. Obviously it's closer to the all time high. Um, I'll say it like that. My hope. If ETH, if ETH moves, it's going to pull the BTC with it. Um, but ultimately that ETH BTC chart needs to break out for me to be convinced that it's the winner. Yeah. My hope. My fingers crossed. Hold on. Setup. Hopium dealer Brian is That's right. back at it again. That's right. I got my hopium ready to ready to shoot out of the cannon here. <laughs> I want ETH Turbo Moon while Bitcoin like is just grinding on the ceiling at its all time high levels. Because if we can get a perfect, glorious rotation of Ethereum moves while Bitcoin stays still. And then January 1st, boom, <laughs> ETH to BTC turbo rotate, the rotator. That's the move. Uh, but ETH, I'm not bullish Q1. I'd rather see it happen in Q, Q4. I want it, net, in, I want tax benefits, the, the tax rotator. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same call that we made last year about alts. ETH to BTC. And if it can happen January 1st, I will be euphoric. I want 64K BTC on December 31st, while ETH is somewhere between 6 and 10K. And Josh, I will moan on this show i will <laughs> like i will give you the best noises you've ever heard in your entire life that's what i'll do if we can get two trades out of one move i mean that's the best the ideal situation for sure <laughs> oh i would be so happy now, if they just move together, that's fine. But you give me that disjointed move. Woo! Yeah, I'm for it. We'll see. We'll see. If BTC gets some futures or uh, not futures approval, what is it? Uh, ETF approval. Then all that goes to crap and Bitcoin rotates and I have to make multiple trades this year and I'll be sad. Yeah. But that's, but that's something that's something to watch for. Something else to watch for is obviously regulatory stuff with DeFi, but. Don't get my... Just, we're in the show. Okay. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I, look, we just have to, you know... Yeah. Pay attention to everything. Monuments Go to ledgersass.com slash sets. In the blink of an eye The easy river Has just run dry In a house of cars I feel the breeze Wound so tight I can barely breathe